And we thank you for just opening up our hearts and our ears of that and our our just I pour out your spirit upon us uh this night uh in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So I'm gonna turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Oh, glory to God, judgment unto victory. victory. Now, this comes from Matthew uh, 12, verse 20. And the way the verse starts is that uh, it talks about uh, a, a reed that has been bruised, uh, but Jesus didn't get rid of it. He talked about a wick that was just almost put out on a candle, but Jesus didn't get rid of it because when he brought victory, he brought judgment, uh, on those situations, he uh, carried them into victory. And so that's the same for us. Regardless of how broken we are or how uh, oppressed we are or whatever our situation is, or when we get judgment, when the Lord brings judgment to that situation, it's going to, to uh, bring us victory because victory is uh, so important and that's, that's what we want. And I want to cover several verses tonight and uh, start with uh, uh, Romans uh, 8, uh, verse 1, that uh, now there is now no condemnation to those who are uh, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking after the Spirit, you're not going to be condemned. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and so that's, that's good. We all need to be walking by the Spirit. So the Spirit of God is, is really important in this message. And Jesus said, uh, when the Spirit of God comes, mm -hmm. this is uh, John uh, 16, 8, he says he's going to convict uh, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to be convicting us about judgment. And that is so important. We'll, I want to give you an overview of why judgment is important. And uh, because when we know the difference between right and wrong, and we've been going down the wrong path. That's the judgment. So it comes to our attention by the conviction of the Holy Spirit that we've been going the wrong way away from God, and then we turn, we repent. So the judgment, then repentance, we turn and go to God, and then we receive forgiveness, and then we have faith. Okay, so let me go, go over those again. I'm going to go over those again because it's a, an it's important process and we'll see it over and over in the scriptures. That first, there's the judgment and this is the conviction of the Holy Spirit that he, that's what's, what we've been doing is evil. It's been sin. We've gone away from God. We turn and go to God. We repent. And so we change the direction we've been going then we receive forgiveness, and then we have faith. It's those four things in that order, and you can't get them out of order. <clears throat> See, there the body of Christ and, and the churches around are filled with people who have heard a social gospel, who have come to uh, to receive a social gospel because it sets things as be better, mm -hmm. do better, and get more. Get more. Uh, okay, but there's no judgment or repentance in it. And so they don't have real faith. They have counterfeit faith because there's a Whoa. process wow. where we get wow. real faith. We have to go through, we have to know, oh, we're going the wrong way. We've been convicted by the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about condemned. I'm talking about convicted that we have been going the wrong way. So then we repent, turn around and go towards God. We realize then we receive forgiveness. See, you can't receive forgiveness until you repent. Mm -hmm. So there's a process here. And people that have not repented, have not received forgiveness. Uh, they may look like a Christian. They may sound like a Christian, but they haven't the real faith. They haven't the believing that it takes to be a real Christian. So they have just accepted a social gospel and there's no change in their heart. And that's the reason there's so much chaos in the 
churches and the local congregations because it's filled with people who have not repented, who have not received forgiveness for their sins. They don't think they've done anything and, and they live like the world and, and they're going to be condemned with the world. And, and Ooh, they please. need to be cleaned up. And the way to do that is the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. convicts them. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times people get under condemnation. They, they're condemned, but the Holy Spirit's not condemning here. He's convicting. And uh, a lot of times there are people that stand up on the street corner and start calling out to everybody, oh, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, sinner, sinner. And, and so that's condemning people. Mm. But, but we're talking about convicting them by the Holy Spirit. And mm. what I want you to, to know, there's so much to know in this message tonight. And, and we're just going to go slowly through it. <clears throat> uh, that a verse that's really important to me is Matthew 23, 23. Mm -hmm. Now, what this verse says is Jesus' words. He said, oh, you have, he's talking to religious leaders. Yeah. Religious leaders who have been very particular about minute details of the rules and regulations. But he mm -hmm. said, you have, you have neglected the weightier matters. Right. And the weightier matters are judgment, mm -hmm. mercy, mercy, and faith. faith. Okay, so judgment has to come first. Then you repent. Then you get mercy, mercy. and forgiveness. Yes, yes. See, if you don't repent, you don't get mercy. You don't get forgiveness. And then you have real faith. So it's, it comes in that mm -hmm. order. And so if people jump those things, they're never talked about judgment. Uh, and they don't repent. They don't realize that they have sinned. They have walked away from God. And, and then their faith is just a counterfeit faith. It's not real. And, and so those people you can't deal with because uh, it's got to be a change of, change of heart. But mm -hmm. you've got to realize that there has to be a change of heart. So they have to know this is what's right and this is what's sin. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He says, this is sin, this is righteousness. And now we're going to bring judgment on people, on conviction. Right? What's sin? What is righteousness? And then the judgment tells us which is which. Hmm. So that's the conviction. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. And it leads us to real faith, effective faith. And if hmm, we miss like those that. things, yeah. if we miss those things, we're going to be in trouble. And so then we get around a lot of people who call themselves Christians, but they have not been changed on the inside. They don't know the difference between right and wrong and sin. And so they live like the world. And so they're going to face a sad day, mm -hmm. a sad day in their life. Okay, what's the next verse here? Okay. In John 7, 24, it says, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Okay. What I want to talk about is a verse, Matthew 7, a verse 1 says, no, judge not lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the verse we're really, that uh, prompted me to get into this whole study and, and to present it to you because probably every one of you can quote the scripture, Matthew 7, 7 1. 1. Judge, judge not, not lest, lest you be, be judged. judged because the sinners in the world know that verse better than anybody and they will <laughs> quote it oh don't judge me don't judge me i'm living in sin and i'm i'm doing all of this evil and all this but don't judge me because the bible says Sith, judge not, not lest you be, be judged. judged okay so that was taken out of context they had no clue what they're doing and, and they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. They don't want to change. And that's, and so the body of Christ is so confused about judgment. What is judgment? Why do we have judgment? And, and they just think, well, we're not supposed to judge. So it's a taboo. Uh, it's a word a, not to be spoken. A word not to be considered. That is hogwash. It's, it's perversion. It's, it's deception from the devil himself Amen. because judgment is an important part of the, of the 
scriptures of the gospels. Okay, so uh, let's just think uh, for a moment about the foundation. What is the foundation of the gospel? Well, it's given in Hebrews uh, chapters 1 and 2, and it, it says, uh, let's just go through this verse here. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection from the dead, and of eternal judgment. Okay, here are just a few elements that are the foundation for our gospel, but one of those is judgment, and one is forgiveness, and one is faith. And if we don't understand what the foundation is, then the whole, all of our understanding of the gospel is just going to crumble because it doesn't stand. The foundation is based on judgment and forgiveness and repentance, but repentance and then forgiveness. So there has to be a, an order there. First, it's judgment, then repentance. Once you know that you're sinning, then you repent, then you uh, are receive your forgiveness. And, and, and then there's mercy. lots of, and there's, there's so many other things then that go on there, but that's the foundation. And if you don't have that foundation, your whole building's going to fall. And we have been, the Christian community have been so beaten over the head with the scripture, do not judge. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and Jesus says, we are to judge, but we judge with a righteous, righteous judgment. judgment. This is uh, um, John, uh, John 7. John mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. Judge, Don't judge by appearance. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't look at outward appearance, but judge a righteous judgment. Right. Okay, and then uh, Corinthians 2, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 15, I believe it is. is it, it is. But he who is spiritual judges all things yet himself is rightly judged by no one. Okay, so Matthew 7, 7, 1 says, do not judge. But here, he who is spiritual judges, judges all, all things. things. But John 7 says, we judge righteously. righteously. So let me ask you, are you spiritual? Are you wanting to be spiritual? Then you are to judge all things. Don't fall for that lie that you're not supposed to judge. If you are spiritual, if you're moving in the spiritual realm, you are to judge all things. See, if you can't judge things, you're going to you're going to be making wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. You're going to be uh, uh, calling things that are white. You're going to call them black, and you're going to call black things white. You've got to know righteous judgment, and you judge all things. He who is spiritual judges all things. So this is, this is the body of Christ has been deceived in this area. And, and so most of us just think, oh, I'm not supposed to judge. Well, there's somebody uh, living evil and doing evil things. And, and you say, oh, I'm not supposed to judge. And, and they say, don't judge me. Don't judge me. That's what, that's what's going on in the world. That's the one scripture they know. That's the one that they have uh, taken and beaten over the heads of the of the Christians who have tried to bring judgment, to bring repentance, to bring changes in society, and, and so then they just go back in a shell. Christians have just gone back in a shell because they say, well, we just can't judge, but Jesus said, judge righteously, righteously. and to judge you judge all things. If you are spiritual, what does spiritual mean? It means your mind is renewed uh, to the Word of God, and, and you're you're being led by the Spirit, by the Spirit. Uh, to be carnally minded. See, carnally minded uh, is death, of course, but mm -hmm. what is carnally minded? It means that you have no godly influence in your life. Well, that's not you. Oh, wow. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we all need life and peace. Now, I want us to think for a moment, what did Jesus preach? 
he preached this one word, his mm -hmm, message mm -hmm. in uh, Matthew 4, 17. He, his message was one word. Amen. Repent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why could he preach one word and get people saved? Well, because the Holy Spirit was so upon him and there was such a, a, a presence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that when he walked by, he could say, repent. And the Holy Spirit was convicting their heart oh, and they repented mm -hmm. and changed. Mm -hmm. See, there is even a modern day uh, preacher uh, and his name was Smith Wigglesworth. Wigglesworth. And he, he had, he was so uh, in tune to the Holy Spirit and he was so spiritual every morning he would spend two hours praying in the yes, Holy Spirit, Spirit before he ever left the home and then he would walk out he'd go someplace where the Spirit told him to go he would go into like buildings where they were manufacturing big, factory. yeah. big factories and people would fall down on their knees he wouldn't say a word yes why was that because the Holy Spirit came in there was so heavy upon him see this message is a weighty message he said you, you, you've been focusing on superficial things he said i want you to focus on weightier matters judgment mercy and faith and, and so smith wigglesworth would go into those factories and the people would fall down on their knees mm -hmm. and repent oh, because yeah. they knew they were sinners and they needed mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have a big message. You don't have to be have a big, long, eloquent message. If you have the Holy Spirit working on, uh, moving on you and moving where you go oh, and yeah. following oh, the Holy yeah. Spirit, he mm -hmm. will move on the hearts of the people. And, and Jesus could just say, repent. That's his whole oh, message. No, no, no. One word, repent. And they would fall on their knees and they would repent because of the presence of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he was convicting their hearts that they needed to repent. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. This is a message we need. We need to be liberated from uh, 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 being cooped up and saying we cannot judge anything just because... Matthew 7 said you cannot judge, 7, 1. See, it took things out of context. And we are Christians. We have to operate in the full counsel of God. Oh, you can't just take one verse out of context and, and say that's the way it is. Uh, and Amen. what what Matthew 7 was really talking about was a brother who had a speck in his eye and you can help that person, but you cannot help that person when you have a big log in your, your eye. eye. And, and so first it mm -hmm. says you have to get rid of the log out of your eye. Then you can help your brother uh, with a, get a, remove a speck, a out, speck of his, out, of his out of his life. Okay, I want to give you a couple of examples, uh, uh, testimonies, which I've heard recently. And, and one woman said, that uh, she had a good friend and a good friend came to her and said, you have a problem. You have an eating disorder and it's going, it's going to uh, damage your health and it's going to kill you and destroy you if you don't take care of it. Well, the woman said, oh no, you're not supposed to judge. You don't, don't judge me. She was offended by that. Okay. So her friend, it was a friend who came to her in love. What her friend did was, well, later she came back a second time. She had another witness with her. She carried another friend. And the two ladies spoke to this lady who had an eating disorder and said, you have an eating disorder. It has to be dealt with or it will uh, damage your health and destroy your life. And then she broke and repented, and she did. She did have an eating uh, an eating disorder, and she thought they were judging her. But when they pointed out what the situation was, it was the kind of judgment that God talks about in the Bible. If you go to a brother, now this is not talking to some sinner out on the street. This is talking about a brother or a sister in Christ. You go and tell them if you see a problem, you tell them what the problem is, and if that uh, if they don't accept it, you go back and you get another friend and you know, the two of you come and tell them. So that's just a recent testimony I heard about a, a type of judgment and the way that 
Bible talks about how to handle judgments. You handle it with love. You, mm -hmm. She went in there and told her in love she had a problem. Well, how, how, why wouldn't we help our brothers and sisters who have a problem? We don't want them to go down a, a road if their bridge is out and they're going to fall in the in the water. Mm -hmm. we, we need to help people like that. Now, what what the world is talking about uh, is bringing condemnation on on uh, fallen people. And we don't want to bring condemnation mm -hmm. no, no. on fallen people. We want to help people. Now, here is another example uh, that I heard recently, a testimony. And, and a man said he drove up to Walmart and uh, there was a man coming out of Walmart and he had uh, a mohawk. And so his, uh, all the rest of his hair was shaved and he had all of these uh, tattoos of skulls and evil things on it. And and uh, this man that uh, saw him said, well, I'm going to go over there. He's a sinner and I need to tell him about Jesus. Well, he got out of his car. He went over there and uh, he turned, it turned out the man had been on drugs and he put a bunch of tattoos when he was on drugs. Then the, he was thrown in prison and then he accepted Jesus. So Jesus was his Lord and Savior. And so he was judging by outward appearance. And he said, I, I want to serve the Lord. And so he was not a sinner. See, that man judged him by the condition of his heart when he didn't know what his heart was. He judged him by the appearance of these tattoos on his, on his uh, head and face. Uh, but that was a that was a judgment based on appearance, appearance and not on real judgment, not uh, not what we should have done by the Holy Spirit, not true judgment. We don't judge by by appearance; we judge righteously. Now, John, First John five says that what is unrighteous is sin. What is unrighteous is sin. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, you say, well, there's two things then. There's righteousness and sin. Well, if it's not righteousness, it is sin. sin. And if it's not faith, it is sin. And so mm -hmm. in the kingdom, there is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. And say, well, that's not, I, I'm doing good. I, it's not sin, but it's it's not righteousness. No, it's either righteousness or it's sin. Mm. And, and uh, Jesus also said, you either are scattering with me or you're gathering. gathering. You're me. either gathering with me or you're scattering. There's no middle ground. Are you gathering or are you scattering? Mm. And all, mm. what you're doing, is it good? Or is it evil? There's no middle ground. And, and a lot of people just want to, uh, to stay in a gray area where it's not really good, it's not really bad, but it's just the uh, way I am and or the way my friends are and this is what we're doing and we're not really hurting anybody. No, it's either righteousness or it is sin. And the Holy Spirit will convict us mm -hmm. when it is sin sin. Yes. And we need to know the difference between sin and righteousness. We are to bring forth righteous judgments. So this is just an, an introduction to, to say that if we take Matthew 7, 1 out of context, then we are going to be deceived and we will let the world run over us and uh, stop our voice. We won't have a voice mm -hmm. in this present world. We've got to know about judgment. This is a foundational, foundational yeah. concept yeah. in the kingdom of God. Now, good, I, I good. want to talk about four kinds of judgment uh, that are going to occur. And the first one is the white throne judgment. We see this in Revelation and, and uh, so I'll go over this because we all need to be aware and understand about judgment and what it is 
and what we can do and what we cannot do. There are things we cannot do. Okay, but I want uh, Sherry to read this out of Revelation because this is the sinners are going to stand before the white throne judgment and they're going to be judged. So let's read this. Okay, Revelation 20, verses 11 and 12. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Okay, when you... And wait, so wait. the dead are those that do not know Jesus. No, these are that's right. These these are sinners. They've never accepted Jesus Christ. Their name is not in the book of life. The book of life is opened only to see if their name is in there. If their name is not in there, they're going to be judged by their deeds, what they've done. And so if your name is not in the book of life, that's where you would go. But I don't want anybody here to go there. So where we're going to go and we're all going to have judgment uh, and, and in the end, we're all going to be judged, but we can judge now. We can go through judgment now on a day by day basis, and it's not going to be a problem when we get there to the end. Amen. Amen. The next judgment, this is the second judgment that it talks about. It's the judgment seat of Christ. This is for the believers. So we're not going to go as believers, as saints, we're not going to go to the white throne judgment. We are going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, let's Romans 14, 10. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. And then here's another verse about it. Same judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. This is out of the Amplified Bible. For we, believers. That's us. We're with the believers. This is where we're going to be will be called to account and must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be repaid for what has been done in the body, whether good or bad. That is, each will be held responsible for his own actions, purposes, goals, motives, the use or misuse of his time. Oh, listen to this opportunities and abilities use or misuse woo, woo. read those last ones this is oh cool. my goodness we're yeah. going to be judged have we used our time wisely have we used our finances wisely have we used our talents wisely we mm. read that last verse yeah. each will be held responsible for his actions purposes goals motives the use or misuse of his time opportunities and abilities oh hallelujah he, he, the motives the motives of the heart are going to be revealed yeah. at the seat of christ and so we can't judge other people mm -hmm. we're not to mm -hmm. judge by their appearance we're it's christ that's going to judge our motives whatever our motives be oh man we may look good to the world we may look good to the church but what are our motives right that? jesus is going to reveal all right. of that now, there is a third judgment. Now, let's look at the third judgment, Jerry. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. This is an assessment for your rewards. You want to go there. You and, want and, to get these and, rewards. And what you've, been, what you've done uh, in the kingdom of God. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work uh, of what kind of, of what, it, what is it? Is it a precious stone or is it hay or stubble? If anyone's work, which he has built on, endures, he will receive a reward. And if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. 
but he himself will be saved. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Yet so as through fire. Hallelujah. So, oh, so hallelujah. This, this, is, oh. this is your assessment of your works mm, for your rewards. Mm, mm, Everybody mm. goes through this. You you bring it, all your rewards are there. I mean, all of your works are there. And, and then the, the God sets the fire to it. And whatever remains, oh, what's not wow. burned up, that's going to be eternally rewarded. You're going to be re yes, rewarded. Yes, this is a yes, place yes. you're judged the, by the, the works that you have. They're judged. And, and if you have works that go through the fire and, and they come out as precious stones, and uh, that that's wonderful. And you're going to be rewarded for that. But if everything you've done in your lifetime has been burned up by the fire of God, Oh, you'll still be saved, but it'll be burned up. Yeah. So you need to be making decisions today. What mm -hmm. are you doing? And will it last? Will right. it go right. through the fire? Will it remain? Okay. So we've looked at mm -hmm. there four uh, judgments I want to talk about. The first okay. one was the white throne uh, judgment. That was for the sinners. I mean, mm -hmm. for the saints. Sinners, sinners. Then was the seat of judgment of Christ. That was for the saints. That's you and me. Then third for the assessment of our rewards. Mm -hmm. What if our works, have they contributed? Have they been built on the foundation of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ? Or are they just out there uh, going to burn up? And the fourth is you judge yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, well, you don't have to wait until all the end for the judgment. You can be judging yourself along the way, day by, by day. day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to read this. First Corinthians 11, 27 through 32. And I just want to stop and say this is a wonderful message. Thank you. A profound message. Thank you. First Corinthians eleven twenty seven through 32. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of this, the Lord. This is about communion. In an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. But let a man examine himself. Let a person examine themselves and so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body for this reason many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep for if we would judge ourselves we would not be judged but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, are disciplined by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Oh, see, mm, if you mm. walk like the world and you talk like the world and you act like the world, you're going to be condemned with, with the, the world. world. Ooh, I wouldn't want to be there. I wouldn't want to mm. think, oh, I've got it all made but I'm going to act like the world. Well, if you act like the world, you're going to be condemned with the world. Okay. Now, something that's really interesting here, how many people do you know that are sickly and weak mm -hmm. and some have even died prematurely? Now, lots of those people. We know lots and lots of people like that mm -hmm. who have been sick and they're sick now. Uh, well, one of the reasons may be they didn't understand Honestly. the body of Christ. See, the most precious thing on this earth whoo, that you can yeah. touch, that you can, that you can feel of, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the body of Christ. And it, it is in the wafer that you eat mm -hmm. in communion. Mm -hmm. And it's also our brothers and sisters because I that's am. the body of Christ. But it's also mm -hmm. the wafer that we eat the unleavened wafer that we eat when we take communion. And when you think, oh, this is precious. This mm. is very precious to me. I, I want to come here and I want to confess my sins before I do that. See, Amen. remember, this is the process. Yeah. You, you, or you understand what the judgment is, what's right and what's wrong. And then you repent when you've gone and done the wrong thing. You repent. Then you receive forgiveness and then, glory to God, you have faith. Hallelujah. Otherwise, if you miss those first three steps, uh, uh, your faith is a counterfeit faith. And, and so lots of people are sick uh, because they have not understood how precious 
the body of Christ is. They don't understand how to approach it. They don't know how to operate in it. They don't know how to take the wafer, which is the body of Christ, and they don't know how to love their brothers and sisters, which is the body of Christ. Those are the most mm -hmm. precious things on this earth most sacred things on this earth that you can touch and see. It's the body of Christ. And, and a lot of people are sick. Okay. So what's the root then of a lot of sicknesses of our brothers and sisters and, and maybe even ourselves? What are the roots of it? We haven't understood the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We haven't approached the body of Christ with the oh, letting it be the sacred thing that it is, the precious thing that it is. We have neglected that. We've neglected assembling with the body of Christ. We've neglected these things. We have thought them to be common to be with the body of Christ. We have thought uh, communion was common and, and not necessary, but let me tell you, it is necessary, and some people are sick because they haven't approached these things in the proper manner. And, and then you cannot just simply pray for them if the roots relate to the fact that they have not judged themselves, they have not operated properly with the respect to the mm -hmm. body of Christ, whether it be the wafer they eat, when they partake of communion or with the body of Christ, other believers, other brothers and sisters in Christ, if they have trodden them underfoot, even with their words and their thoughts mm. or whatever they have done, then they may be sick. And if that is the root of the sickness, it cannot just simply be prayed for that they be healed. Now, we pray, are delivered. For, we pray for people and not realizing that there is a root problem sometimes for these sicknesses. And we need to take time. Before you start praying for people who are sick, you need to take time and pray and discern whether or not there's a root problem that they have not understood the sacredness of the body of Christ on this earth. And, and that is judgment. And, and we have to come to understand what the root problems of sickness are. And sometimes it, these things, they have not understood how precious, how sacred is the body of Christ. Amen. So Amen. Amen. I've tried to lay out some fundamental things that we all need to know about judgment. Do not be deceived. If people tell you, do not judge, because there's a lot of things about judgment that we all need to know and walk in. And then, praise God, we'll walk in the rewards that God has for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. I'm, gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to bring um, uh, a definition of being um, chastened by the Lord. This is not punishment. This is not putting cancer on you uh, or some other kind of disease or making you mentally ill or causing you to go through pain and suffering. Uh, in <coughs> Hebrews 12, 10, it says, For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best for us. That seemed, that was our parents. Yeah. That, but he for our prophet, the Lord for our prophet, that we may be partakers of his holiness. And so he chastens us with the word of God. He chastens us with the spirit of God by convicting our hearts that we might be partakers of his holiness. You know, there's a scripture that says, be ye holy, even as he is holy. And so he wants us to walk in that. He wants us to walk in judgment that we can judge ourselves and we can judge situations every single day and bring righteousness into our lives and bring holiness into our lives and recognize how precious the body of Christ is. And, uh, and I know when Brother Fran and I take communion, and you know this, we take it every single day so that we can remember what Jesus did for us every single day. It's a, re it's a reminder. It is a, um, a 
a, not a ceremony. It's not a ritual. It's not something that we do on the first Sunday of every month. Uh, but it is, it is a fellowship time, a communion time with our Father and with our brother Jesus and with our guide and comforter, the Holy Spirit. And, but, but we repent uh, before we ever take communion. We examine ourselves and we examine our spirit. Is our spirit in line with the word? We uh, uh, judge our bodies. Uh, we declare them to be whole and healed uh, because of the stripes of Jesus. And we, well, so we examine ourselves and we, then we partake of of communion 